Hello, all you big, beautiful brains out there. Today, we're going to be talking about the autism diagnostic process. Before we get started, take a minute to subscribe to Psy vs. Psy. Help out your friendly neighborhood psychologist while I tell you all about the autism diagnostic process. Here on Psy vs. Psy, we always love getting your helpful comments. So when we saw this one asking about walking through the process of autism diagnosis, we shifted everything to make sure we featured it for Autism Acceptance Month. If you found this video because you're at the beginning of your diagnostic journey, here are some of the things I wish someone could have walked me through before diagnosis. We'll talk about this both from an adult and child perspective, so these tips should be useful for anyone who may be considering assessment for autism. Number one, how will diagnosis impact me? This one sounds simpler than it really is. While there are some really helpful accommodations that you can get at places like your job or your school with a diagnosis, there are also some really serious limitations that come along with autism diagnosis. Depending on where you live, these restrictions could include anything from barring you from certain types of jobs, including things like military service, or access to moving to certain places or countries. So be sure you're aware of what the restrictions are that will impact you. For many adults on the spectrum, not much changes besides personal validation and a sense of understanding. And, you know, nothing important, just my conceptualization of who I am as a person and fulfillment of my unmet needs on my journey to self-actualization. Because of this, self-diagnosis may not lead to formal accommodations, but may be cheaper and more accessible than diagnosis by a doctor. We will make a video about this, and while it won't get you a sensory swing at the office, self-diagnosis is recognized as valid by many people in the adult autistic community. Two, who can help me? If you decide to pursue a diagnosis, the next logical step is to find a licensed practitioner in your area who can help. Because autism is such a specialized diagnosis, it can be hard to find providers. Although it is contrary to instinct, don't be afraid to ask for help on this one. Check local message boards for autism specific groups in your area and ask for help finding good doctors. Check provider directories to find doctors who are familiar with different presentations of autism in women, girls, undiagnosed adults, or underrepresented groups. If you're working under medical insurance benefits, email your insurance provider and see if they can help you find a diagnostician who specializes in autism. Number three, what will happen when I go? Over the past few years, I've noticed one of the main deterrents for individuals seeking a diagnosis is anxiety about the process itself. Generally, the process is quite similar to diagnosing really anything else. First, you go in for an initial interview. Psychologists call this an intake interview. You'll have the time to talk to your doctor about your symptoms and what seems to be impacting you the most in your daily life. Then, you'll go in for testing. For autism screenings, you will most likely have to take a variety of both paper assessments as well as in-person tests with the diagnostic professional. Your testing will probably be done by a different person than your initial intake interview. While it would be unethical for me as a psychologist to talk too much about the specifics of the tests themselves, it's pretty standard to test for other conditions similar to autism or that are often comorbid with autism in order to know if those conditions can be ruled out. The most common test used for autism is called the ADOS, the Autism Diagnostic Observation Schedule, which has different versions depending on your age and your abilities. Often during testing, there will be a structured conversation where they will ask you a bunch of questions or interact with you in specific ways. In these types of tests, there are no right or wrong answers. Just be yourself. Do what comes naturally. If you're weird, be weird. It's okay, really. Whoever you are is who you should be. This generally isn't as much of a problem for little kids, but adults might really need to hear this. 
It's also standard to give an IQ test since the DSM-5 specifically states that those individuals whose social communication symptoms would be better explained by intellectual disability shouldn't be diagnosed with autism. If the testing part of the process is what's holding you back, you can try taking similar types of tests online, like the Autism Quotient or the RADS-R. While these tests aren't a stand-in for clinical diagnosis, they do have similar questions to the type you'll be asked in an interview. You can also use the results from those tests to better explain and just help gather your thoughts for your initial intake interview. Do know that there are some problems with these types of online tests, and I've linked some of the science in the description. But when used as a tool to help further your process or relieve anxiety, they can be really useful. After the testing process, your doctor and your testing professional will meet together and go over the results of your test. This usually includes a report of your test results that you will have access to once you receive your diagnosis. Your doctor will take all the information from your interview and your tests into consideration before they meet with you again to go over your diagnosis. Typically, at this meeting, your doctor will also propose a plan to help going forward now that you have a diagnosis. And here's the really important bit. It's okay to ask questions to your doctor. If something is bothering you more than the doctor realized, it's okay to speak up. Or if you think they haven't given a symptom as much weight as it should carry, it's okay to say so. It can often be difficult for autistic people to speak up in this way, but any doctor used to working with autistic patients should be able to go over the nuance of your diagnosis until it feels comfortable for everyone to move forward into treatment. Number four, make sure you understand and agree with the treatment plan. There are tons of options available for autistic people when it comes to treatment. Everything from speech therapy to occupational therapy to cognitive behavioral therapy. Therapeutic needs vary from person to person when it comes to autism, depending on the issues they feel are impacting them the most. For instance, it wouldn't make much sense to send someone struggling with sensory difficulties to a therapist specializing in communication. Autism is not a monolith. And there isn't going to be one treatment plan that's best for every autistic. Another extremely important point is that there are some types of therapy that many autistic adults consider controversial or abusive. I urge anyone considering using Applied Behavioral Analysis, or ABA, for yourself or your child to do a deep dive on the science and attitudes surrounding the practice and to listen to adult autistics who have been through the process before coming to a decision. Anyone going through therapy deserves to feel safe and comfortable. And this is especially important for autistics because of communication needs. It can be extremely difficult for autistics to communicate when they're feeling uncomfortable, disturbed, pressured, or anxious, and most therapy relies on individual self-advocacy. If you find yourself not understanding or at odds with your doctor, it's okay to pause, gather your thoughts, and make sure that you're pursuing therapies that will positively impact your life. If you want to see more videos from us about autism, make sure to check out our Autism and Neurodiversity playlist. Or if you just want to know more about how psychologists diagnose things, make sure you subscribe to Psy vs. Psy so you can get all of our other videos and you can learn all about the science of psychology. Until next time, keep thinking, and I'll see y'all later. Bye! Besides, what good ever really came out of New Zealand anyway? Except that. <laughs>